After two straight losses, Bowling Green State University football looked to bounce back against FCS opponent Eastern Kentucky Saturday in a critical game for head coach Mike Jinks, who some national media outlets say is in the hot seat. That seat remained toasted in the early minutes of the contest, not only because of the heat on the field, but because the Colonels jumped out to a 14-0 lead in their first two possessions, courtesy of Daryl McCluskey Jr. and Dakota Allen. The Falcons would make a big pushback, however, in the second quarter. After a long drive down the field, Jared Dagey punched in a QB rush for a much deliberated touchdown that was eventually confirmed. Then after a stroke of luck from a muffed punt by the Colonels, the Falcons recovered and struck quickly with a 24-yard touchdown pass to Quinton Morris. EKU would try to collect themselves after their lead had vanished, but they ran into some more turnover trouble as Jerry McBride recovered and returned a fumble to the 22-yard line. From there, the Falcons would take a lead of their own as Andrew Clare claws in for six. Darryl McCluskey's second rushing touchdown of the game, this one for 68 yards, quickly brought things to 21-all. Bowling Green would then take their next drive to the red zone, and with 45 seconds left in the half, Jarrett Dagey found Derek Putavong from 18 yards out to give BG the 28-21 lead going into the locker room. The Colonels would receive the ball in the second half and continue to run the ball right at the Falcons, leading Alfonso Howard to score a seven-yard QB draw. Colby Coleman swung momentum back to the Falcons' side as he strips the ball from Dakota Allen and recovers to put Jared Dagey in the driver's seat to throw his third passing touchdown of the day, this one also to Derek Poudivon. Unfortunately for the Falcons, a poor snap on the point after would come back to bite them as another Dale McCleskey touchdown and successful extra point would put the Eastern Kentucky Colonels up 35-34. Then with just under seven minutes left in the game, Quinton Morris would make a great grab in the corner of the end zone off a fade for his second touchdown of the game and Jared Dagey's fourth. Oh yeah, it's, um, it was a fade call. Corner was playing outside, just took an inside release, faded to the ball, caught it, knocked the wind out of myself a little bit and helmet broke and everything. So, BG completed the two point conversion to take a 42-35 lead. The Colonels would try to tie the game in the dying seconds, but were unsuccessful, meaning the Bowling Green State University Falcons would take a win at the Doit, something they could not do last year. Uh, uh, a win's a win, and in college football, sometimes they're hard to come by, uh, especially uh, in our case over the last couple of years. So, um, again, it, it was not just the win that I'm proud of. It, it, it's the way that we won, to fall down 14-0 uh, uh, and, and have every, every, uh, you know, every reason to say, okay, here we go again. Uh, they didn't do that. They stayed together. Um, we came back and, and we made a charge. We took, took advantage of some of their mistakes. Uh, limited ours for, 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 the, for the most part, but uh, um, win at home is huge. As I said uh, last week, uh, this year, us being successful at home is going to be key to our success. So um, we'll take them one at a time. Bowling Green moves to 1-2 and two on the year and will take on the Miami Red Hawks at the Doit September 22nd. Reporting for BG24, I'm Max Marco.